Breaking tonight, the administration now talking up a summit meeting on global threats that will take place next month. It was originally scheduled to happen in October, but it just kept getting pushed down the schedule. There are new questions about the White House strategy to fight the war on terror. The critics say there is no cohesive strategy for one simple reason, they say, that the Obama administration refuses to recognize the real enemy and call it what it is, radical Islam. Ed Henry pressed White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest on exactly this issue of strategy today. Watch this. Why wouldn't you use the phrase right there that we are going to take on Islamic extremism? You said all forms of violent extremism. Whatever. Well, because she asked me what the summit would discuss, and all forms of violent, uh, violent extremism would be uh, discussed. And obviously, uh, the most potent and certainly the most... Um, uh, you know, graphic display that we've seen in recent days is, uh, again, is, is motivated by those individuals that seek to invoke the name of Islam to carry out these violent attacks. And that's uh, certainly something that we want to work very hard to counter and mitigate. And we've got uh, a strategy that we've been discussing for some time to so exactly do that. most potent form, according to you, of extremism, why isn't it the summit on countering Islamic extremism? Uh, because violent extremism is something that we want to be focused on. And it's not just uh, uh, it's not just uh, Islamic violent extremism that we want to counter. There are other forms of... Paris, Australia, Canada, isn't the thread through them that it's Islamic extremism? Mm -hmm. well, well, certainly those are, all the examples that you cite are examples of individuals who have cited Islam as they've carry out, carry, carried out acts of, uh, of violence. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no arguing that. All right, so that's his take. Earlier I spoke with State Department Deputy Spokesperson Marie Harf. Murray, welcome. Good to have you here. Thanks. You know, every time we see this exchange, it seems like the answer is so tortured, like it's so difficult to say what everybody around the world seems to feel so clearly it is. And what the leaders have said in Canada and Australia and Paris, where they have felt it so potently and personally, they've all said quite clearly that the battle is against Islamic extremism. Why is that so hard to say? Well, it's not hard to say, but it's not the only kind of extremism we face. I would recommend uh, to, to folks looking at this administration's counterterrorism record, I would remind people that more terrorists who claim uh, to, to, to do acts of violence in the name of Islam have been taken off the battlefield in this administration than under any previous one because of our counterterrorism operations and our efforts that we've put in place. But that's not the only way that you counter this kind of extremism. Much of it Islamic, you're absolutely right, uh, but some of it not. So we're going to focus on all all the different kinds of extremism with a heavy focus on people who do this in the name of Islam. We would say falsely in the name of Islam, but there are other forms of extremism well, that are this. also what other, important. Tell me, what other forms of extremism are particularly troubling and compelling to you right now? Well, look, there are people out there who want to kill other people uh, in the name of a variety of causes. Of course, uh, Martha, we are most focused on people doing this in the name of Islam. As we've talked about with ISIL, uh, part of our strategy to counter this extremism is to have other moderate Muslim voices stand up and say they don't represent our religion. They speak for their religion more than we do, certainly, and we need those voices to stand up in addition to all of the other efforts we're undertaking. All right, I just think a lot of other countries probably listen to the way we're talking about this and scratch their heads and wonder why it's so hard to spit it out uh, in a lot of these these conversations. Uh, Mike McCall, uh, Chairman Mike McCall, said we, we don't see a lead agency. There's no line item in the budget. There are no metrics to measure success. I don't think we have a strategy. We don't have a common definition for what this is. And, you know, obviously he's a critic, but there are people, even former administration officials, who say we've been working on this for a long time, but we, we're not sure whether or not we're getting anywhere. Well, I think when you hear the president, who's talked about our counterterrorism operations, as have people like John Brennan, the director of the CIA, the director of national intelligence, they very clearly uh, said that we have had some success against al-Qaeda Corps, naming specific leaders we've taken off the battlefield, against AQAP, naming specific leaders we've taken off the battlefield. But more broadly speaking, it's bigger than that. So talking about how you counter this extremist narrative, that's a tougher challenge, but it's one we're very committed to, certainly. And I think other countries around the the world look at the U.S. and the success we have had and how aggressive we have been, and they know how committed we are to it. But I think the world is looking for a leader, you know, someone in the vein of a Winston Churchill or FDR who says, look, we know what we're facing here. This is a global war. This is, you know, girls taken by Boko Haram. This is 132 students massacred in Pakistan. This is people who were going out for coffee in Australia. This is people who were just showing up for work in Paris. And there's a common thread here of radical 
Islamic extremism. And until President Obama or John Kerry or someone else in, in their position stands up and says, look, we know we're facing a global threat of radical Islamic extremism. We must band together and we must fight it. That's what everybody is longing to hear, it appears, Marie. Where is that well, message? I, th I, th I think all of these leaders have made very clear the serious threats we face. If you look at the president's speech at West Point, if you look at the things Secretary Kerry has said, it's not as easy as, as defining it the way you just did. We have to look at each threat individually. All of those threats you just mentioned are from different groups in different places. But do you and believe, you let me ask you this, Marie, ways. do you believe that there is a common thread in everything that I just mentioned? Is there a common thread? I think that's a little overly simplistic, to be honest with you, Martha. I think you have to look, if you talk about Boko Haram, yes, they claim to be acting in the name of Islam, but you counter them in a very different way. You counter a sleeper cell, like we saw in Paris or in Sydney, or how you counter AQAP or Al-Qaeda Corps. How you talk about these groups is, is different in terms of combating them based on where they are and the threat they pose and how you, how you fight them, really. But it doesn't appear to me that these groups have any problem uh, explaining what their motive is and where their motive comes from. And it's an extreme religious viewpoint that they scream from the top of their lungs every time they take somebody's life, every time they Absolutely. burn families inside their homes. So I think to, to say that there's not a common threat, everyone, you know, it's not overly simplistic. We all understand all of these different groups. Uh, we just named many of them when we talked about it. I want to ask you one more question in terms of, mm -hmm. of, of Secretary of State John Kerry saying that he thinks it's quibbling to say that somebody should have been there. President Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, Secretary of State John Kerry, when we watched that move moving march that was really a, a moment that touched so many people, they had to have been looking at each other saying, where's the United States? Well, I think the White House has been clear that someone senior, more senior should have gone. But I also think the, there were several very moving moments last week uh, with Secretary Kerry speaking in French directly to the French people on the day of the attack with President Obama and Secretary Kerry going to the French embassy to express their condolences. Uh, Secretary Kerry's going to Paris on Thursday to do so in person. And look, I don't think American leadership in the world is defined by any one march, regardless of how important the march is. I think if you think it is, that's really taking a pretty limited view of American leadership. All right. We'll see. Marie, thank you, as always, for being here. Good to have you here tonight. Thanks, Martha.